Georgi Zhukov was born in a small village near Moscow in 1896. Like the vast majority of the population, Zhukov's family was desperately poor. Aged only 10, the young Georgi was sent to work in Moscow. Conditions were harsh, and in 1914, when the First World War broke out against Germany, conscription into the army was welcome escape. They assigned me to a combat squadron, and I was delighted. In 1917, Russia's Tsarist monarchy was overturned by revolution. The war with Germany was abandoned. In the civil war that followed, Zhukov proved himself a competent leader and rose swiftly through the ranks of the newly formed Red Army. By 1923, he was commanding a cavalry regiment. Throughout the 1920s and 30s, the Soviet Union underwent a massive transformation from a backward peasant economy into an industrialized nation. Many of the reforms were brutally imposed by the Soviet leader, Joseph Stalin. In an army that was poorly equipped and badly organized, Zhukov acquired a reputation for planning and discipline. In 1937, Stalin sought to ensure his absolute power against any potential threat from the military by launching a series of bloody purges. 40,000 officers were either imprisoned or executed. In this dangerous atmosphere, Zhukov's life was probably saved when in 1939 he was unexpectedly sent to fight a Japanese force that had invaded Mongolia, an ally of the Soviet Union. Well, the situation was very, very tense when uh, Zhukov was ordered out to Halhengol in the summer of 1939. Um, he uh, went out, quickly organized the defenses, and he uh, brilliantly took charge of uh, coordinated attacks against the Japanese using artillery, air, and tanks in coordinated actions. Sort of a first ever for the Russians. He also replaced weak commanders, sometimes ruthlessly, until he found the commanders who could attack the Japanese. He used deception to great advantage against the Japanese. Uh, one small example is he had a book printed uh, called What the Soviet Soldier Needs to Know in Defense, and that was left scattered around the battlefield so the Japanese would pick that up and think they were that the Russians were preparing to defend, when in fact he was planning a great uh, offensive. Zhukov's defeat of the Japanese was so devastating that they agreed to a non-aggression treaty. In the same year, the Soviet Union also signed a non-aggression pact with Nazi Germany. But in this case, neither side was under any illusions they would soon be at war. Zhukov was summoned to Moscow to help prepare for the coming conflict. His abilities so impressed Stalin that he was made chief of the general staff. Under immense pressure, he worked to mobilize the Soviet army that was desperately short of resources and officers. He told his family to prepare for war. Даже в самые трудные какие-то напряженные моменты писать нам э, короткие записочки. У меня хранится дома несколько его вот таких записочек с фронта на листках маленьких листочках из блокнота, написанных, как правило, каким-то цветным штабным карандашом, там синим или красным. Вот. А потом, уже когда мы переехали в Москву, появилось больше возможностей говорить по телефону, и он нам часто звонил. Germany, having conquered most of Western Europe, attacked the Soviet Union on the 22nd of June, 1941. The Soviets suffered immense losses. A million men were captured and a million killed in this first offensive. The Germans felt assured of imminent victory. By the autumn of 1941, they had reached the outskirts of Moscow. Defiantly, Stalin held the annual October parade. 
troops march through Red Square straight to the front lines, only a few miles to the west. Zhukov carefully organized troops and established defenses around the city, which, combined with the effects of a severe winter, halted the German advance. Then he launched a counterattack, inflicting the first major German land defeat of the war. I think Zhukov looked on the Battle of Moscow as his finest hour for the simple reason that the, the Soviets were really under a great deal of pressure. Uh, they had already evacuated the city in many cases. The government had been shifted over to Kubyshev. And uh, Moscow was two-thirds surrounded by the Germans. The Germans could see uh, the spires of Moscow from their positions. And Zhukov came through with a brilliant counter move and save the situation. 